Welcome again to Bees on Main. I'm Rich Morris, uh, lead drone here at Broodminder in our production facility in beautiful downtown Stoughton, Wisconsin. Today we're going to talk about batteries. Batteries are a, a big deal for us uh, because we like wireless design. Uh, we hate wires, uh, solar panels, all that uh, work, but batteries are a lot more convenient if you can master them. Uh, the biggest issue is, you know, how long they last. So we put a lot of effort into that and want to talk about it a little bit today. Designing our devices, we had to balance a lot of different things. Uh, one is size, uh, especially for the internal sensors. <laughs> B space is a quarter to three eighths of an inch. So that means we have to live within a quarter inch. So that, that determined uh, the, size, the biggest battery that we could put in there, which was a CR2032. Um, another thing that determines it is how much energy the battery holds and how quickly we spend that energy. So those are some of the reasons that uh, we put out a, a beacon pulse every five seconds from these uh, so that we can make sure that that battery lasts at least a year. And uh, typically they last two years. Um, with the scale, we started with that because we already had circuit boards designed. But then uh, this year we evolved to where now we're using a couple of AA batteries because they, they fit in the size of the scale we have. So we redesigned the board and, and we can make it use um, AAA batteries. And so, you know, that allows us to pump up the transmitter power a little bit, also advertise more often, uh, so once every two seconds instead of once every five seconds, which makes it connect to your phone quicker and all those good things. Then we also have the, the sub hub and the hubs, and in that case we can put the bigger batteries, uh, two AA batteries, and for the sub hubs, we actually have room and we put four AA batteries. So with the coin cells, with the AAA batteries, we get roughly 15 times the amount of energy. And with the sub hubs, we have about uh, 30 times the amount of energy. So that lets us do a lot of different things. The next problem is having the software do all that because these microprocessors in our, in our uh, devices they have about a thousand different functions a thousand different things they can do and we want to be able to you know really sip the energy from from the batteries as slowly as possible uh, when we started this six years ago that was a really hard thing to measure so we had this voltmeter this ammeter which uh, can tell us tell us all that but it doesn't let you see how quickly things change and because we're sending out these advertising pulses, they're called the beacon pulses, uh, they last just a couple of microseconds and we want to be able to capture that. So writing that software was really tricky because we'd have to put it in this mode, then that mode, then combine them together and hope that we're okay. And as a result, you know, we've, we've found it, but uh, it was an awful lot of testing and uh, a lot of work to get that working right. Uh, last year, we got this new device called a Jewel Scope, uh, which was yeah, three or four hundred dollars, but that was compared to the test equipment we would have needed before, which was about ten thousand dollars. So once we got that, now we can see continuously uh, what's going on with the current consumption. And we can measure that. We can leave it run for several days and then see how many it uh, has, how many microamp hours, how many milliamp hours uh, that the battery's been used up. And then we can test our software with that. It's still a big challenge. Um, Rich Hogel and I spent the last two days uh, working with uh, the new uh, Wi Fi device. So our new Wi-Fi device is basic, it's based on our, what we call our XLR board that we sell for DIY and a lot of different things. And we've added a Wi-Fi module to it. And 
we know exactly what we want it to do. We know it, we want to power down the Wi-Fi. We know all these things. And then you start working through the specification sheets and uh, it literally took us two days to figure out why the specification sheets didn't exactly match the performance of these and some of the chips on it, we, we can put them into, you know, we call it, they call it a power down mode where it goes from consuming a few milliamps to consuming a few microamps. So that's a thousand times lower and on average, we need to be uh, consuming less than 10 microamps uh, when it's idle. So it took us a long time. Uh, Rich stuck with it, and we would just keep you know, trying it and testing and trying and testing. And we finally got that. So now we know that with the uh, batteries on the Wi-Fi device, it should last uh, over a year at this point. Uh, we'll keep working on it and try to get that you know, closer to two years. But we want all our devices to last at least a year just because it's a pain in the butt we know to change it we don't want to use up all those batteries um, we'll have instructions if you want to you know power it from solar or those sorts of things you can do that yourselves but that's the way we plan to go with it um, and these two the thingy uh, we now have also working and sending data to the network um, and just starting to work on the power consumption with it. Uh, there again, the devices in here are capable of going down into the microamp consumption range, but we just have to make sure the software is doing that and not accidentally leaving on an LED or leaving on um, something that we don't even use. Uh, we just have to go through the list of the hundred different things that could be wrong and make them go away. And, you know, both of these, you know, they will fit, you know, inside the solar shields like we've recommended with the, uh, with the subhub device. And, you know, that's coming along really nicely. The one other thing I want to mention is, you know, where you can get your batteries. So we buy lots of batteries. We've, you know, shipped 20,000 devices. So we've bought more than 20,000 batteries. Um, the places we get them usually are DigiKey because it's convenient and they've got good prices. Uh, when we buy them in uh, our quantities, we pay about 25 cents for uh, the coin cells. We typically buy FDK uh, coin cells or Panasonic. There are some cheaper ones and we really think they would work just as well, but uh, we've had good luck with FDK. And so that's what we're sticking with. Uh, you know, when it works, don't change it. Uh, with regards to the the uh, AA and AAA bo uh, cells, uh, the highest capacity ones we found are the Energizer Ultimate Lithiums. Uh, they're L91 and 92, I think. And we normally get them from uh, a company called TheBatterySupplier.com, uh, and we can buy them. You know. 500 or 1,000 at a time. Uh, but frankly, the prices that you can get by shopping around on Amazon are also pretty good. Uh, typically, we pay $1.40 for the AA's and $1.35 for the AAA's. So there's not much difference um, in the price of those. But uh, the AA's, which we use in the W3 and in the Subhub, you know, they carry a lot more power, uh, so, so that's what we do there. So the other thing I want to talk about a little bit are, you know, is what goes wrong. So if your devices aren't lasting a year, then you know, there's a couple of things, and I'll show some, some pictures alongside here, but what will happen uh, when the chemistry changed back in the 80s for flux remover, for the flux used with the solder, um, then we started having these problems. Uh, they're a lot more environmentally friendly, but there's some drawbacks. And what can happen when you keep a, a DC voltage? So like the voltage coming out of a battery is DC and it's there all the time. So it's not going up and down. It's just uh, a, a DC voltage. When that's across two contacts that are close, then with this flux, it can make these, some people call them tin whiskers, uh, tendrites, dendrites, sorry. Um, but it 
makes almost a wire. Uh, it's not a very good wire, but it's good enough that it can drain the battery faster. That is typically what goes wrong in these. You know, we're putting them in a high humidity environment inside the hive or outside in the weather, and the humidity reacts with the flux that remains on the board, and these can form. Now, to combat that, we've tried to use bigger parts, but, you know, these microprocessors are little tiny parts. The switches, all those things are really small. So we also can formally coat them, which, you know, puts a layer of almost what's fingernail polish uh, over the board to protect it. But humidity can still get in there over the years. So if you have that problem, there's a couple of things you can try. They're in our user's guide. Uh, remove a couple of components that, you know, help a little bit, but if they're gone, it's not a huge deal. Um, or you can, you know, send them back to us. We'll refurbish it. Uh, if we can fix it, we will, or we'll sell you a, a, a used one uh, at a lower price. Like I say, if they're not lasting over a year, you know, then get with Mike, uh, support at mybroodminder.com, and we'll work through that uh, because, you know, we're designing them for that, and they should be working like that. One more thing is we have released the Bees app uh, on the Play Store and on the Apple App Store. Uh, so go there and get it. Uh, we're doing sort of a soft release. Uh, we've been running it for the last couple of months. Uh, Amanda has done a fabulous job on this. Uh, Amanda and Lorenzo have both worked really hard to make this easier. It works better. It's working better with all the Android devices uh, and the iOS devices. Uh, we're still, you know, working through. We haven't tried it on all 4,000 different kinds of Android devices. So um, try it out. Uh, the old apps still work, so we'll leave them up for, for a while. But uh, give that a try. And that's about all I got this week. So uh, thanks for listening. And remember, every hive counts.